Hi there everybody, welcome to part two of my five inch prop testing series. I've now tested over 40 different props from the likes of Ethics, DAL, HQ, Emacs, iFlight, Axis Flying, Azure, and Gemfan. I think this is one of the most comprehensive tests of five inch props that's out there and I'm really excited to share the results with you. If you like this work and you want to support more test work like this, I'll just let you know now that I do have a Patreon and that there's a link to that down in the video description. Also down in the video description is a link to the spreadsheet which has all the data from all the testing I've done on these 44 props. So please go ahead down to that video description, find the link, download it, open it up and look through the results for yourself and you can cut the data however you want so that you can work out which prop is right for the type of flying that you like to do. But right now I'm going to take you through a quick summary of how I collected the test data and I'm going to take you through the conclusions and give you my thoughts on which props I thought performed really really well and which ones maybe not so well. So I hope you're going to find this video really interesting and really valuable for choosing the right props for your quad. Let's get right into it. Let me start by summarizing the tests that I did on these props. Now you can see the first part of this video for more detail on the test equipment, the tests and the calculations that I conducted during my testing of these props. I'm going to put a link to that in the video description. But if you just need a recap, I measured the weight of the prop and I measured them with a, a balance accurate to 0.1 grams. And that's a really good measure of the inertia of the prop as well, how fast it's able to spin up and spin down. I measured the efficiency of the prop at 1,000 grams of thrust. So when the prop was producing a kilo of thrust, I measured the amount of power that it required to do that in watts to calculate the efficiency in grams per watt. And this efficiency at 1,000 grams was a really good predictor of the efficiency over the whole range of thrust that the prop produced. So you can see the first part of the video for some more information on that. I measured the maximum thrust that the prop could produce. And I measured its advanced ratio, which is a, a kind of a predictor of top speed. Basically, it's the ratio between how fast the prop needs to spin in order to generate a certain amount of thrust. If the prop can generate a kilo of thrust spinning more slowly, then it's likely to be able to achieve a higher top speed because it won't deload as quickly as you accelerate. And there's more info on that in the first part of the video as well. And I also measured the vibration of the prop at 20,000 RPM. So all the props spinning at the same speed, 20,000 RPM, and I measured the vibration that they generated. And that can be a really good predictor of how well balanced the prop is from the factory and therefore how much it's going to affect your tune on your quad, how much noise it's going to bring into the gyro when you're flying it. When we're thinking about advance ratio, there is something we need to bear in mind about the relationship between advance ratio and prop wash. And that is that a prop with a larger advance ratio it runs a higher risk of experiencing blade stall when the prop is running in a reverse flow situation like when you've just done a sharp 180 and in FPV we call this phenomenon where the propeller blade is stalling and then unstalling and then stalling and unstalling and you get that oscillation we call that prop wash however a prop with a larger advance ratio is likely to be able to achieve a higher top speed so that's a trade-off that you're making when you're when you're choosing a prop if you pick something with a low advance ratio it's going to have excellent prop wash handling but it's going to have a lower top speed. If you pick a, a prop that has a much higher advance ratio, it's going to have a much higher top speed, but it's also going to suffer much worse from prop wash. A quick summary of the test equipment that I used as well. Now, you can't do a proper propeller test without a thrust stand. And this is my choice for 5-inch props. It's the Taito Robotics Series 1585 thrust stand. Measures up to 5 kilos of thrust, 2 newton meters of torque, it's, it's ideal for these sort of five inch size motors. And the motor that I use for this testing is what I think is the most typical kind of five inch motor that we're using today, which was the iFlight Zing 2 2207 1855 kV. And I use the same motor for all the, 
all the prop tests and I think that it's a, a really good benchmark motor to use for this type of testing. Before we jump into the results, a note on durability, and this is where you can really help. It's audience participation time. I haven't tested durability for these props because I don't really have a scientific test for that yet, but I bet you have. So please leave a comment down below if you found a particular prop really durable or a bit on the fragile side, and I'm gonna read through those comments, and if there are any standout performers, either props that are really durable or props that people say are really fragile, I'll let people know in the video description or with a pinned comment about that later on. Now a note on the scoring, and I calculated scores for each of the criteria that I tested based on the performance of each prop compared to the average for all the props that I tested, and I think this is the, the fairest way to score it, really. For parameters where lower is better, for example weight, I calculated it by taking the average mass divided by the mass of each prop to give a score, and I reported that as a percentage. So 100% would be the average weight, and if it's 110%, that means it's 10% lighter than average. For properties where higher is better, for example thrust, then I took the value for the prop and divided it by the average value. And again, if the prop is producing the average amount of thrust, it's going to get a score of 100%. If it's producing 10% more thrust than average, then it's going to get a score of 110%. The total score for each of the props was just the average of all the individual scores. So let's take a look at some data now. And now's the moment, if you haven't already, where you can go down to the video description and download this spreadsheet, which has all the data that I've collected. I'm going to take you through the different columns and kind of tell you what they each mean. We'll start in the score tab, and we've got the name of each prop right here, the number of blades, the diameter of the prop, the pitch of the prop, and then we get onto the first measured parameter, which is the weight of the prop. So we can see here that the lightest prop is 2.7 grams, and that's the Ethics P3B2 blade. And the heaviest prop is the Gemfan Hurricane 51455 four-bladed prop. And if we look at the weight score, you can see that the heavier props score lower, and the lighter props score higher. The next column is the efficiency of the prop when it was producing 1,000 grams of thrust. And this is measured in grams per watt, and is taken by averaging the efficiency of the prop um, over a period of time when it was producing a thousand grams of thrust. The efficiency score is higher for props that were more efficient, so produced more grams of thrust per watt of power, and less for props that produced less thrust per watt of power. The next score is just thrust, that's maximum thrust at full throttle, and again the highest scores given to the props that produce the most thrust. The next two columns are used to calculate the advance ratio. So we're looking at the RPM of the prop when it was producing 1,000 grams of thrust, and from that calculating the advance ratio, which is the ratio of the free stream velocity of air moving through the prop compared to the prop tip speed. And this is not true advance ratio because this is a static test, but it's a proxy for advance ratio, and I explain how I calculated that in the first part of the video, so you can go back and watch that if you're interested. I think that a larger advance ratio is beneficial because it's going to mean that the prop deloads less as you accelerate and it's going to give you potentially a higher top speed. So for advance ratio, I gave a higher score to props that have a large advance ratio. The final parameter that I measured was the vibration, and that's measured as root mean squared acceleration and acceleration here measured in G. So a prop that has lower vibration is going to create less noise on your gyro, it's going to allow you to run less filtering for less delay, and push your D gains and P gains higher for a more responsive flight feel. So less vibration is really good, and we can see here that the props that produce the least vibration get the highest score. The total score, which is the final column, is just the average of all the individual scores. If you're interested to dive into the data in even more detail, you can look at all the data from an individual test in the relevant tab. So this is for the Gemfan F4S, and I'll take you through the columns. So we have the test time here, 
followed by the ESC signal. Now the ESC signal goes from 1000 to 2000, and it's measured in microseconds. 1000 is 0% throttle, and 2000 is full throttle, 100%. And the test starts at 5.5% throttle, which is a very typical idle throttle value for most quads. The next three columns are the acceleration in the three axes, X, Y, and Z, and that's used to calculate the vibration of the prop. So this accelerometer is mounted on the thrust stand. The next column is the torque that the thrust stand is measuring. So that's the torque that the motor is applying to the prop. And this column is the thrust in grams of force that the prop is producing. Then we have the voltage and the current that's being supplied to the ESC. Then we have the motor RPM, and that's measured using an optical sensor with a reflective tape. And the electrical power that is being consumed by the ESC. We also have the mechanical power that's being produced by the motor, and that's measured using the torque meter here and the optical RPM. And that allows us to have both a motor efficiency and a mechanical efficiency of the propeller in terms of grams of thrust per mechanical watt of the motor. And then we have an overall efficiency for the whole system, which is what I'm most interested in, which is the thrust produced per electrical watt that's being delivered to the ESC. The final columns are vibration. That's the root mean squared vibration on all the axes, which is kind of a measure, I think, of how well balanced the prop is. And finally, the temperature of the motor, and that's measured using uh, an infrared temperature sensor. And that's just measuring the outside of the motor bell. So let me take you through the best performing props. And we'll start with this, the Ethics P3B Peanut Butter and Jelly two-bladed prop. It's got an exceptionally low weight and low vibration, and it's really efficient. And actually, we should expect a two-bladed prop to be more efficient than an equivalent three-bladed prop, because every blade you add reduces efficiency. It has a lower advance ratio, so that's going to limit the top speed that you can achieve with this prop. And it's got a pretty low maximum thrust and a pretty low thrust across the board, really. So it's maybe not ideal for a heavier quad with a heavier camera. But if you've got a lighter quad, this could be a really great solution for you. Let's come on to this 5 by 25 by 3 from HQ. It's got exceptionally low weight and vibration, and it was the most efficient prop that I tested as well. You can get a version for a 5mm motor shaft or a T-mount. The only con here is it's got quite a low advance ratio, so that might limit the top speed that you're able to achieve with this prop, but it still produces really good thrust for carrying uh, normal sized action cameras. For me personally, I think this is the prop that I'm going to want to be flying on my 5 inch freestyle quads because I really focus on vibration and responsiveness with my quads and I'm not so worried about top speed. And that lower advance ratio is also going to give me better prop wash handling, which is something that I also really care about. If we look at the 5x4.3x3 from HQ, both the V2S and the V1S were great performers across the board. They didn't let down in any area. And the V2S was slightly better than the V1, particularly in, in the advance ratio here. They are relatively lightweight, they're exceedingly low vibration, and they produce above average thrust and great efficiency as well. So you can't really go wrong with these props. They do everything really, really well. If we move on to the iFlight Nazgul F5 props, these again are a great all-round prop. They're only averagely efficient, but everywhere else they're performing well above average. And again, they have this great vibration score here, so they're going to be nice and easy to tune. Let's come on to the Gemfan Hurricane 5125. Now this is very similar in style to the 5.1 by 2.5 by 3 from HQ. It's an extremely light prop. In fact, the gem fan is pretty much the lightest three-bladed prop that I tested. So it's going to accelerate and decelerate really, really fast. It's got a good vibration score. It's got a great efficiency score. Where it falls down is a little bit, it has a very low advance ratio. That's going to limit your top speed. The prop's going to deload quite quickly as you accelerate and it doesn't produce um, as much thrust as a typical prop. If we look at the Azure Power 5050, this is a prop that's light, it's low vibration, it's got good efficiency, it's a two-bladed prop, 
and it's got fantastic looks. You can get some really beautiful versions of this prop um, with lots of different patterns and colours. And cons, not really any. It performs averagely well or better than average on every point. Let's talk now about the Gemfan Hurricane 51466 and I've got both the V2 and the V1 here that I've tested. This is a prop that's strong across the board, particularly it has exceptional vibration performance so that's going to make it nice and easy to tune your quad, you can run less filtering with this prop. It performs really well on every point, the only place where it falls down slightly is in the weight so it's a slightly heavier prop, that's going to mean it's slightly stiffer and is probably the reason why it has a good advance ratio and a, and a good maximum thrust as well. If you're running a larger motor like a 2207, the extra weight probably is not a big deal at all and this might be kind of the ideal all-around prop for uh, a freestyle quad with 2207 motors. It's between this and the HQ 5x4.3x3V2S. I also tested the 51433 and this is a, a lighter prop than the 51466 in terms of weight. Um, it's similarly efficient. It actually produced slightly more thrust in my testing than the 51466 in a static test. Uh, but it has a slightly lower advance ratio. So you're likely to see this prop deload uh, a little more quickly as you accelerate than the 51466. And the vibration performance wasn't quite as good as what we got with the 51466. But overall, this is a great all-around prop as well from Genfan. If we look now at this prop from Dal, the Nepal N1, this was a, a pretty good prop across the board as well. Lightweight, efficient, average thrust, uh, an average advance ratio, but good vibration, so it's, it's well balanced. And this would be a, a good pick for an all-rounder. Uh, very similar to something like the 51466 or the 5x4.3x3. The final props that I want to talk about are the Gemfan F3S and F4S. Now these are pretty light props that are nice and efficient and they put up really good thrust numbers, so above average on thrust. And the F4S particularly delivered over 1600 grams, which I think was one of the highest thrust values that I tested. The advance ratio is as you would expect with the F3S having a lower advance ratio, a little bit below average, and the F4S having a higher advance ratio. Vibration score on these was okay, but not as good as the 51466 from Gemfan. So that's my summary of this test data. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you've watched this far, please take that extra second to hit the like button so that other people will find this video, and to make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss future videos. I'm planning to do some testing on some larger props, 7 inch props. So um, hopefully that will be useful for people that fly long range and center lifters and things like that. I'd like to invite you, if you haven't already, to download the spreadsheet with all of these results in and take a look yourself. You can filter the data, you can cut the data different ways depending on what's interesting to you. And if you see something that I've missed, please leave a comment down below. I'd be really interested to see what other people see when they look through the data as well. If today's the day when you feel my work has earned your support, then I'd really appreciate it if you'd check out my Patreon. There's a link down in the video description. You can join from just a few dollars a month and you'll get some sneak peeks, access to special areas of my Discord server, and you'll be supporting more uh, videos and test work like this. That's all I have for now. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.